And welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and I thank you so much for joining us on the program today. We're going to take a little different tack of sorts. It's still all the same great stuff of uh, uh, bringing you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. Uh, but we're going to be talking a little television with our guest, who is part <laughs> of a new program. Uh, Terry J., I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get into all your particulars. You're an intuitive uh, and um, you're just the other side of a beautiful mountain range you've got behind you if folks are watching us on YouTube. Uh, and uh, I'll bet you that's nice and cool there. I love the purple, uh, the purple uh, scarf you've got there. Thank you. That's my wild rag. Your wild rag. <laughs> that's what they're called. Yeah. It's so funny. I saw that on uh, um, uh, Yellowstone. And somebody says, you guys are riding drag. I hope you got your wild rags on. <laughs> oh, my. I must have missed them. Well, you are uh, also uh, listed here as a cowgirl shaman. Is that right? That is correct. It's a perfect um, anomaly. The words per perfectly describe what I do. I'm a down to earth Nevada cowgirl. And yet at the same time, I do. I'm a shaman. I help people heal and I work in the ethers. So it's just a really good way of describing the anomaly that is I. <laughs> and you've also uh, you're, you're also an author as well. Yes, I've got three books and one in process. And uh, it, they're they're all to teach people how to develop the abilities that they were born with. So because really you say that we're them. all intuitive. Absolutely, everybody has intuition, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairaudience, and claircognizance. Claire just means clear. So I thought, we all have all of. I them. thought that was my neighbor. <laughs> well, it might be your neighbor. I don't know. Her name's Claire. Yeah. So intuitive communication is, I believe, uh, one of the books. Am I correct? Yes, that book is for first responders, caregivers, and medical personnel, because they're always working with people that can't communicate due to illness, injury, or disease. And I want people to know they're in there. You can still connect to them. As long as they're still attached to their body, you can reach them. And some of the case history, case studies that are in there, I re I'll go back and read them and go, did I really do that? Because they're so bizarre. They're just bizarre. Out of the cowgirl shaman way. Uh, what let's define that because everybody that we have on this program who makes reference to or refers to themselves in that context has a slightly different definition. What is yours? Um, well, I look at being a shaman as as a healer, and and uh, and I've been a, ho a horse person, a professional horse person, my whole life. So it's just a bit the best combination. And what I do is I help people and their animals to heal their lives with the messages that I receive for them. And that's that's why I describe it that way. But I'm also a medium for, for people and pets. And so um, that sort of puts you in working in the ethers, which is what a shaman does. What do you need from someone when you are when they are wanting to be in touch with a loved one pet? who has, has passed on. I have difficulty thinking of it in the context of who went to the other side, because I don't see it that way. I don't see that it's the other side. It's just a part of this side we can't see. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. I just use that term because it's very, it's accepted, it's understood. Um, I look at people and animals that as being no longer physical. I call them non-physical beings, because right. I think that's much more clear. And they just vibrate at a higher frequency. And, you know, we're stubborn humans. We need to see something physical. And if somebody doesn't have a body, we think they're gone completely. And they're not. Nothing can be further from the truth. They're still here. I love uh, what Jesus said. He said, uh, you know, uh, blessed are you who who uh, see and believe. Blessed are those who don't see and still believe. Right. Absolutely. That's really important. I loved when he said all this and more you can do. Oh, you know, he was either doing a healing, going to a healing or coming from a healing. Yeah. And he said yeah. all this and more you can do. So I don't understand why people could condemn somebody that does the kind of work that I do, which has produced incredible miracles. And we have 8 billion people on the planet now. And it's right. like you're going to put the doctors and the pharmaceutical companies or anybody else in the medical community out of business, uh, you know, by doing that, because 
people are holding on to a lot of stuff that creates those outward manifestations of dis-ease. You work right. with people in order to release those blockages internally? Absolutely, because a lot of times we're not aware that we've got all this childhood crap that we're still carrying around with us. And then we can we continue to com, um, repeat those negative patterns that we learned in childhood about behavior and belief. Mm. And so we really have to find those, take our power back. I really have found after doing this for 33 years that disempowerment is the cause of all disease. It really is. And it's, and it's go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's people taking your power. We're born powerful. We've just come from source energy. And even though we're the helpless infant, we know we're here to create with our thoughts and our feelings and we're powerful. And then little by little people take your power. They say, you can't because you're a girl, you're a boy, you're too stupid, you're too ugly. And they take our power. Mm -hmm. And so we have to learn to take our power back. And there's a very simple technique. You think about who took your power and you write them a letter and you tell them off and then you burn the letter while you say out loud, nobody's ever going to treat me like that again. And that helps you get your power back. It's very simple, but it's not easy. Dear government of the United States, <laughs> because that's one of the first things that came to mind is that, um, and I remember back in 2000 during that particular presidential campaign, I was watching Al Gore uh, give a speech and he said, together we can do this, 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 this. I'm going, oh yeah, let's, all right, let's do it. And then in the next breath says, now here's what the government's going to do for you. And I turned it off. Oh, geez. Yeah. Because, because it seems as though uh, we have been led to believe that some external source, whether it be government, whether it be church, whether it be educational institution, whatever, uh, seems to think that uh, they know better than we do. When, in fact, you are here to tell us we as individuals, not under some constitutional anything, but from the intuitive standpoint, the metaphysical standpoint, we do have the power and we need to take it back. And it's not even metaphysics. To me, I, I'm, I, the, the word psychic, I don't like because it means not of the physical sciences. Mm -hmm. And if, every, if physics covers everything, then that word is worthless anymore. Yeah. And, and even metaphysics, paranormal, all of those things still get melted down into physics, energy, frequency, vibration. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I really just like to keep this as pure as possible to physics itself. Well, I want to tell our listeners, the website is terryj.com. That's T-E-R-R-I-J-A-Y.com. And uh, we are going to continue with our conversation with uh, Terry J here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it is really a pleasure to have her, uh, Terry J, with us and uh, to talk about the work that she does. Uh, she is an intuitive. Uh, you're a pet intuitive. Now, uh, obviously, a very uh, a horse whisper, if you will, a remote <laughs> viewer, a medical and veterinary intuitive, a medium for people and pets. I had someone do uh, um, sort of a connection uh, with my uh, 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 um, departed, uh, shall we say, or leaving the body, uh, beautiful white, uh, uh, we think shepherd husky mix. Uh, she had a little pink nose. Uh, her name was Makushla. And um, uh, they gave me this uh, communication that, that uh, uh, she had, uh, this gal had with uh, Makushla, uh, basically saying, you know, I am really sorry. I did not intend for my life to go this way because she had lost the use of her hind legs. And for 14 months, my wife and I took care of her. I mean, we, we took care of her. My wife was saying, no, she still has so much love and life in her. And I was feeling badly because yes, she does. And yet, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like I want to release her from that body. And we finally did. Um, and can I, can I interject here? Yes. Animals and humans that are non-physical will never, and I got to underline that, will never share anything negative. So whoever was doing your reading was dumpster diving. Oh. They were in the garbage that the dog left behind when she, when she became non-physical. Because there's a hard dividing line in physics, you know this, between positive and negative energy. Mm -hmm. So when the energy that it was a human or an animal it goes to the other side or becomes non-physical, 
They have no memory of anything negative that happened in the earthly realm. And not only that, they cannot perceive anything negative in the earthly realm. Mm. So that person was dumpster diving, basically. Well, I, I, I will update you that actually this information came before we released her. Oh, then yeah. that's perfectly normal. Yeah. That I take before, that back. Yeah, that before. was perfect. Yes, because animals, when they're still in form, can have negativity, obviously. Mm -hmm. But she, her, her, I, I, I would put it this way uh, from my interpretation of what I was told that her heart was broken over the fact that she couldn't be the dog that I wanted her to be or that she had been before that she got to a point, And I loved this about her where uh, you've seen this many, many times where they'll, you know, the, 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 the person will walk outside in an unfenced area and the dog stays right there. Right. Or if they wander off and you call them, oh, they come like a yo-yo coming right back. And that's what she became. And it was so, it was, that was so cool. Right. Uh, and then I was told too, that uh, even after her passing, that she would be with me. She would be with me in some way or another, looking over my shoulder, so to speak, uh, uh, and so forth. Well, they try to find a new physical form and come back right away. Mm -hmm. They can even do a walk-in. I know I have a lot of people that get confused about this because they put their dog down on a Tuesday and Thursday, they go to the shelter and get a puppy. And then the puppy dog, that was alive when their dog was alive um, starts acting like the dog, the past. And then they get so confused by it. And that's called a walk-in. It's not mm -hmm. a regular reincarnation, but it's called a walk-in. Now and these, these walk-ins, they'll come in. <clears throat> if it's a pet, it'll come back as a pet. It not necessarily a human or something else. You know, I have found that there's really only one rule and that's with God. All things are possible because I have a horse that my friend Linda walked into. This horse changed overnight and she started picking up her dish when she was done eating and handing it to you. She does zippers. She does Velcro. She takes your hat off. She gives you a facial. She says it's kisses, but it's a freaking facial. It's a horse yeah. slime facial. It really is. Well, with a tongue, a horse tongue. Yeah, it is a facial. <laughs> so she did all of these things and she, it's like somebody flipped a switch on her yeah. and she just changed. She was very dull, very not interactive. And then, Boom, Linda walked in and that was it. So oh, wow. it's nice to have to have Linda in a physical form too. So it's pretty fun. TerryJ.com is the website. We're talking with Terry J. She is an intuitive. And I actually like that word. Medium is okay, but I, I actually prefer intuitive because it really mm -hmm. speaks to the heart of what it really is. And that is that you, in, the, in this case, you're tapping into your intuition in terms of what you're picking up as you said before, in the in the ethers. And uh, we also encourage you to go to her website, terryj.com. We will be linked to her website as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, Terry J is our guest. You are also part of, we want to get into more of the work that you do, but you're also part of a, a, a new television series on Peacock that actually started the first of this uh, year, 2023. Yeah, it, that's when they did the, they offered the first three in the series. There's only six mm -hmm. and I'm a whole bunch in the third one, a little bit in the fourth one. And unfortunately I'm in the sixth one too. <laughs> not happy about that, but I'm so, not allowed to talk bad about it. So I won't. Well, I'm just curious as to what you, uh, what you were doing. What was your role, if you will, in the, in this series? What were you providing? What kind of information? Well, Paul is, has been looking for love. He actually went to Russia, found a Russian bride, had a child with, you know, with, with that uh, woman. And um, then they just had differences. So they got divorced. And then he was looking for love again. He thought he found the perfect woman. And um, he called me because not long after he had gotten married, she was insisting on having her name put on all of his assets. And he just didn't feel comfortable with that, which is why he called me for a reading. And I got that she wanted to get paid for sex. Only she didn't want money on the dresser. She wanted his stuff. And so I was very suspicious of that. And I just felt like this woman is not who she says she is. So in, in becoming his own detective and hiring detectives, he found out she had separate bank accounts. She had separate phone. She had um, just this total separate life from him. And um, he was able to determine that she was in fact a hooker, a madam. And, and we also think that she was probably into other things. 
Ah, well, we'll leave that other things for people's <laughs> imagination there. Right. Um, when, uh, how did you meet Paul? Um, I had done a reading for him a couple of years before it, the reading about, about this woman was in 2005. So I think a year or two before that I had tried to help him with a lost dog. His son was young, left the door open and the dog took off. And what I had gotten is that somebody picked up the dog and was not going to give it back. Oh yeah. Wow. What's up with people, you know? Well, yeah, I just did a reading like that this morning for a lost dog and, uh, you know, I it mean, happened in December, so they just called me now. So it's been quite a while. But whoever found this dog just doesn't want to give him back. And the rather infamous story, of course, about Lady Gaga and her her dog and her dog oh, yeah. got That's shot. Terrible. I mean, it's like good grief, people. You know, you want a dog? We got plenty of of rescue shel centers, rescue right. shelters. You know, right. don't be taking somebody else's dog. You know, well, I think in the case of Lady Gaga, they were trying to hold the dogs for ransom. They yeah, I, dogs they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I will tell you that there are times when uh, karma is uh, is it, it's a long term. It takes a while for karma to kick in, and other times, it'll turn you around like that. And you yep. you never it know. Does. You just nope. never know. Yeah. Um, so you gotta you gotta you gotta watch yourself. When um, how did you get involved with this uh, with this uh, a television series, this six part series? I mean, yes, you knew Paul, but what what was the impetus for creating the series? about you know paul's life well he wrote a book and in the first reading i told him i said you better write a book about this mm. and so then he started recording the readings and so he he wrote a book and then he wrote a screenplay and then he was contacting producers and he got the attention of jason walliner and jason walliner uh did borat too he did ah. that one <laughs> and some other things that i can't remember right now but Anyway, so Jason wanted to make, you know, this into a series. And um, so they finally were able to, I think, make a deal with Peacock. And Peacock was, you know, going to pay to get it finished. They actually were here in Carson Valley in 2017 doing a lot of the filming, of, you know, of me. And they had Paul and I together and, mm -hmm. and things. But um, it was pretty interesting. So uh, and and again, I, I'm I'm asking these questions with with the greatest of respect. Uh, but who is Paul that we anybody would want to watch this series? Of what significance, or is it more the story surrounding Paul that that draws people into watching the series? I would say it's the story because he really went from being a wimp to a warrior. We have yeah, a I saw that in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, we have a word in Yiddish called a nebish, and it's it's it means a nothing. Mm -hmm. And so everybody described him the same as a nebishy kind of guy. And then now he's he's a warrior. Nobody can screw with him now. And, and this going through this process and getting his divorce and finding out, you know, how horribly she was trying to dupe him it has just made him a lot smarter. So he really did go from wimp to warrior. And that that's the story. And to caution people that this can happen to them, too. Yeah, it is quite possible that that can happen. I've been doing these programs for over 15 years, been interviewing for over 40 and and talked with a, a lot of people. I've experienced a lot of uh, situations in projects that I've done where uh, people on the outside say, you know, you're undercharging, they're taking advantage, et cetera, et cetera. And I have never looked at it that way. Now, Paul's situation obviously is different because uh, I look at it from the standpoint of, well, I'm getting the experience in this project. Yeah, I'm not making a bunch of money, but I wouldn't make any if I said, no, you got to pay me this rate as opposed to this that you can afford. Sure. Uh, sure. And, and, and that's kind of how I say, no, then no one's taking advantage of me because I want to do the project. I think it'd right. be fun. And I don't know what I'm going to learn or who I'm going to meet, you know, that kind of thing, or who knows where I might go, that kind sure. of deal. Uh, it might be uh, quite an adventure. But it's definitely it, not what Paul signed up for. I was going to say, that, <laughs> that wasn't not, the adventure. He no. Didn't buy that no, he did not sign up to be taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah. And he really couldn't look at it in any other way. No, no. She that was actually, was you know, making up corporations for him to send a check to so that she could just cash it, you know. Wow. Yeah. So um, when you uh, when you when you agreed to be a part of this series, um, uh, was was this something that you just said I, I need to do this or 
Um, oh, I just thought it would be fun. Yeah. And I, and I thought, you know, what I gave Paul helped him so much, mm -hmm. you know, it really opened his eyes to what was really going on. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't think that it would be turned around the way that it did, you know, um, you know, my rates are some of the, some of the least expensive in this industry, it's only 50 and 90. And I have really impeccable ethics where you cannot book more than one reading a month. I will not allow people to create codependencies. Ah. And those are some of the bad things that people in this industry do is they try to book your next appointment or, oh, we're time's up, but gee, I was just getting something really juicy for you. Do you want to keep going? They do yeah. that stuff all the time. It's terrible. Yeah. Or, or your loved one hasn't crossed and for uh, $5,000, I might be able to get them to the other side. People still do that. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah, uh, they still I, I was, do that. Yeah, I was watching a documentary about snake oil. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> same thing. It's same along thing. those same lines. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. There's so many people in this industry that had their hearts in the right place. They just want to help. They want to help heal. And then you've got the other people that are reading a freaking script. It's all fear-based, terror-based, threatening, you know, um, even predictions. People get mad because they they want a reading, but they want predictions. And I will not do them because of the law of attraction. Yeah. You know, the law of attraction states what you think about to bring about. So if I get something negative and tell them, and then they yell, no, no, no at it, they're going to pull it to them and make it happen. Yeah. And if I or, see them working really hard to achieve something and I go, oh, yeah, you're going to get it. So yeah. then they quit working, then it won't happen. And I'm the bad guy. So no predictions ever, ever. I want to talk a little bit about the law of attraction and for just a couple of moments. Uh, but first, I want to remind our listeners, you're listening to uh, Terry J and yours truly, Richard Dugan. And this is Tell Me Your Story. We are talking about uh, um, the the concept or the the reality, not just a concept of of uh, utilizing one's intuition, one's internal voice. We promote this, Terry Terry J, who is my guest here on the program. We promote this under the context in the context of encouraging people to participate in the decade of perfect vision. It started out as the year of perfect vision, twenty twenty, and moved from there to the decade twenty twenties where we ask people to go within, to go into that quiet, still, calm, peaceful place and listen to that still small voice. I myself call it my friend and uh, my friend will never put me in harm's way, will challenge me, has challenged me over the years, but has never put me in harm's way. Um, but that is a place where we slash you uh, can get the information that is needed to move forward uh, to the next step. And the more we utilize that, what uh, is this accurate? The more that we utilize that internal voice, the more it becomes sort of second nature. We don't want to take it for granted, but it sort of becomes second nature. Sometimes even as you're walking down the street, you'll get a pull to turn left at the corner or cross the street at the right. And I've even uh, taken this as I'm driving I get into uh, I get into the lane I want to be in when I'm going to make the first turn, even if it's six miles down the road, because I've heard it said that a lot of people have gotten into a lot of accidents by changing lanes that they did not really need to be in. Just stay right where you are. It's OK. You know, we all have guides and I think guides are an energetic manifestation of our own personality aspects and our connection to the other side or to source. And so we all have guides. We all have as, as many as we need, as many as we want. And so we just have to listen. Um, I think a lot of people make a mistake because if they hear a voice and it's helpful, um, then they, they'll say, are you my angels? And, and it's almost like your guides will go, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm your angel. And then if they go, are you the Archangel Michael? uh yeah okay yeah i'm the archangel michael <laughs> and so they think they're getting guidance from angels and angels have one function save your hiney bye bye that's it they save your hiney as much as they can and then they're gone but your guides are 24 7 i mean mine drive me crazy oh my goodness <laughs> and they do because they know i'm listening all the time and so they never shut up 
Uh, so I have I have a guy that a guide that I he's just the most wonderful gay energy and he tells me what to wear every day. He goes, put on this and this and you'll look fabulous. And I love him. He's uh -oh. wonderful. And he even helped me with my outfit for the um for the premiere when I went down to LA. It was pretty pretty wild. Oh yeah. And um and then I've got a, a lady who sounds like she's from Minnesota with that wonderful Minnesota accent. Oh yeah, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm cooking. And um so you just hear different guides at different times. Yeah. And and what's really funny is when I get information from them and then I get ah, ah, you know, don't share it. And it's like, well, why'd you tell me if I can't share it? You know, <laughs> and it's just like, we wanted you to know. They'll point out people to me when I'm out in public. See that guy over there? Yeah. What do you get? What do you get? What do you get? And I go, oh yeah, liver. Yeah. Oh, oh alcoholic. Oh, and then another, they'll point out somebody else. Oh, pedophile. Ugh. You know, and so they'll point out people just to see. I think they're just testing me to see if I'm paying attention. Yeah. Well, you know, again, I, I think that uh, our our intuition, again, it'll challenge us. I, I had a situation that I was dealing with a long time ago. And I'm getting this, this impulse, this, this prompting, do this, do this, do this. No, that's contrary to what I'm doing in this particular area that goes against the grain. Sure. And it kept going, no, no, you need to do this. And I'm, all right, all right, I'll do it. And I did it. And within a day, I realized, had I not done it, things would have been worse that next day. Oh, absolutely. We've got to listen to our guides. The trick is the minute you start hearing voices, and they're always going to be positive and happy and, and guiding. And the minute you hear them say, I hear you. Thank you so much. And you can just say that in your head. Mm -hmm. Um, th then they start talking more. I mean, I know they're all high-fiving themselves going, Hey, she heard me. Yay. <laughs> she heard me. She listened. Oh my God. You know? So, um, as when long you, as we start listening, then they get louder. It should yeah. be the other way around. They should get softer. It, no, it should be loud in the beginning, ah. not soft. Like, psst, you know? I, yeah. Hey, uh, what is the first <laughs> question that one should ask? when diving in if let's say they've only they haven't ever done this before they even though they've probably heard it they just haven't recognized what it was because the church doesn't tell us to listen to that you know and and nobody else in any of the other institutions tells us to do that because the outside world knows better how how for how how we should live our lives but when a person starts listening like they're encouraged by what you're saying what is the first question that one should ask to make sure that they're dealing with th the right source. They can start with um, easy stuff, you know, easy stuff, directions on how to get someplace. Okay. Um, I remember the first time I really heard my guides really loud is I was heading over to somebody's house and I really wasn't too sure um, where this person lived. And it was in the era when we still had those laminated spiral bound flip maps. <laughs> That's oh, how long yes. it was. It was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I just heard pull over. And it was like, okay. And I pulled over and I needed, once I looked at the map, I needed to turn right at the very next light, which was only a few hundred feet up. Mm. And if I had not stopped and looked at that map, it was one of those situations where I couldn't get there from there. So I had to turn right at that at that light. And I was like, thank you guys. That was wonderful. So um, you, you know, when you start hearing, and, and people will call me and they'll 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 say, Oh, my sister-in-law had to be institutionalized. She's hearing voices. And I go, Well, yeah, I hear voices all the time. What's the big deal? But she wasn't able to take care of herself. So, you know, that's the big difference. If you're still a functioning, happy, abundant productive member of society and you hear voices you're doing great you are doing great but mm -hmm. if you're non-functional or you're abusing drugs or alcohol or something and hearing voices then you need to get some help mm. interesting series and, and, and it's on peacock and the voices will always yeah. be positive stuff the only thing you'll get is like cautions like watch that guy over there in traffic he's texting or watch this one. They don't have any idea where they're going. They're going to go across three lanes. You will get that stuff. And that's cautionary, but it's it, you're never going to get, oh, go kill some people. You're never going to get that. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that, I know that uh, when I was talking about this with someone, that was one of the things they brought up. So, well, how can you be sure that those aren't the, the voices of someone telling you to do that kind of thing? You're not going to get it. Yeah. Especially if you maintain a high vibration, you have to really have a high vibration. The happier you are, the more you can do this work. You can't do this if you're an unhappy person. You're not going to carry a high vibration. It still comes back to physics, energy, frequency, vibration. You've got to be happy and upbeat and positive in order to help other people because you can only help other people to the level and degree that you've helped yourself. You say, even though I have been doing this work for so long, I'm always surprised and sometimes even shocked at the details and the information that comes through. Absolutely. You know, I think of it, I think of every reading as like Christmas. And the only thing is, is, you know, sometimes you open packages and it's socks and underwear, you know, but most of the time when you open it, you know, it's a, you know, one of those gaming devices that you're really excited about. My favorite expression, and I really hope my TV show can be on a channel where we can use this. I really want my show to be called I Can't Make This Stuff Up. Only the other S. <laughs> I know what you were going to say. I know. <laughs> I didn't, though. That's good. You no. were very good there. I know. You know, and 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 that's true. There have been instances um, that where, uh, and I remember back in the 80s, and this has to do with uh, uh, our own uh, federal government, where stuff was happening in committees and this and that and the other thing. And, and someone even said that, uh, uh, they said, my God, Hollywood couldn't make this stuff. No, so and even, and even that's today, true. even today, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, really, you know, right. uh, I would rather that it be in Hollywood than in the nation's capital or any other capital across the country. Right. <clears throat> it's really kind of unfortunate. I think and, people need to not focus on it though, yeah, because yeah. truthfully for everyday people, Whatever's going on in the government has very, very little impact on your daily life. And I think people need to understand that. If you want to go change it, then go run for office. But mm -hmm. truthfully, people get so depressed and so upset about what's going on because they have no control over it. But the important thing is it doesn't impact you. Go be happy. Mm -hmm. Go have a productive life. Do what you're passionate about. And that then that, that stuff doesn't matter. It just really doesn't. I want to talk a little bit as we continue here about <clears throat> this aspect that we talk many, many times on this program about, and that is one's life's purpose. We're talking with Terry J. We're talking about the work that she does, the series that she uh, was a part of, a six-part series regarding uh, Paul um, Paul Goodman, I believe it was, was it not? Paul T. Goldman. Yeah. Paul T. Goldman. Goldman. And uh, we'll continue doing so right here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and Terry uh, Terry J, a cowboy, sh cowgirl shaman right. uh, is my guest here on the program. Let's talk about this, this aspect of one's life's purpose. When you are working with people, do, do if you can even put together any kind of, of percentage marker as to the number of people who don't know why they're here how do you help them to find oh my goodness i would say it's most everybody, most everybody. i would okay. say it's most everybody really and when i when i'm working with somebody that that is confused i tell them what are you passionate about what did you do as a kid that you just absolutely love mm -hmm. and so i never had a problem because i was so passionate about horses from an early age and so I knew it didn't matter what I was going to do. I just had to make my living with horses. And because mm -hmm. really, I didn't I didn't care as long as I could, you know, smell them and be around them and ride them. And mm -hmm. and so I've I've just had to transform my life at, at different stages to doing different things. One of the best things that I that I did was off and on for 35 years, I did a horseback therapy program with disabled kids. Oh my God, we averaged about a miracle a day. I loved it. And, and but when I was getting a divorce, it was like, nope, you got to shift. And I had already had my opening by hearing a nonverbal child in the program speak to me. And that's when I became intuitive because I thought, wow, I'm telepathic. What else can I do? Yeah. And um, so, I mean, that was my opening in 1990. And so then that's when I worked at doing readings full time. And it's just evolved into this incredibly wonderful, happy, healing vocation. I love it. I just love it. 
So um, I just tell people, find out what you're passionate about and figure out how to make a living doing it. I think a lot of people get a get an interpretation that they've already determined before they came into physical form their purpose. Nothing could be further from the truth. You know, we're here to create. You cannot create from non-physical. We are God energy in a meat suit. That's really what we are. <laughs> we're the same energy, yeah. right? Yeah. And so anytime we come into physical, it's to create. But there isn't any set thing that we have to do. It's yeah. whatever makes you happy. Because there's a book called Power Versus Force. And that book is incredible. And it goes into just talking about how one happy person counterbalances the negativity of tens of thousands of negative people. Can you imagine that? I love that book. It's power versus force. And that book changed my life because I thought, so my job is just to make me happy. And if I'm happy, I'm counterbalancing the negativity of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. And and then realizing that the more you evolve yourself, the higher your vibration gets, the more you're the more people, negative people you're counterbalancing. And I mean, that was like, all right, that's a job to me. Yeah. It's counterbalancing negativity. So I, I, it's just really, really important for people to realize there is no specific set thing that you came to do. It's whatever blows your skirt up, really. <laughs> you know, it, it makes me think from a different angle and a different perspective then uh, of those uh, uh, inalienable rights that are listed in the Declaration of Independence uh, about life and liberty. And then they threw in, I don't know if it was an afterthought or if someone was was uh, <clears throat> smoking a little something or whatever. And the pursuit of happiness, what does happiness have to do with? And I, I mean, I think it's a great thing. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But it just it just seems almost out of context. Life, liberty and property or and, uh, you know, no. something other something else really profound, because the pursuit of happiness doesn't seem like it's that profound. Well, but a lot of people aren't happy. This is they true. Keep, they keep looking outside of themselves for something to make them happy. You know, I mean, it's really funny. I laugh about watching shows like QVC and they go, if you had this, all your neighbors would be jealous of you. And if you could throw this ring under somebody's nose, wouldn't they be jealous? And it's like, are you freaking kidding me? When yeah. did all this stuff become important? It's not. Yeah, but they use it as sales techniques, and I just, I just roll my eyes at that stuff. Like, really, that's where you're going to go with that? No. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. I like that. We're talking with Terry J, and uh, the work that she does is an intuitive. Uh, you not only work with animals, you work with people, and uh, especially, I, I think one of the the greatest works one can do in this regard would be to help people to understand better about their their pets which are more than just pets they're family members i mean oh my goodness I don't, yes, what, they're, they're I don't care what any other trainer ever says about no you don't want to make your your pet like one of your your furry children you know they're a pet they're a this no no, no like, no i'm no. sorry but that no. is the way that it works because they're there for you and and of course the health benefits of having different animals yep. uh, around you we have um we have three cats. We used to have nine and we used to have three dogs and a bunch of chickens. Now they weren't all in the house and uh, we're down to, to one dog and three cats and two chickens. And uh, we're going to get some more this weekend. As of this conversation, we're going to add to our uh, flock uh, because the two that we have aren't laying, uh, aren't laying eggs, but you know what? It's okay. I love, I just love having them. Oh, sure. They're, they're fun. Cool. Well, they, there's times of the year that they don't lay. So yeah, well, ours of, haven't been laying for over a year. So oh I mean, no, I it I would be that stew. time for them. <laughs> chicken stew, chicken stew should be on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, and I know people will bring that up. Well, have you eaten them yet? No, no. <laughs> you know, no. It's like okay, so when so so what what level of productivity does a cat or a dog have to reach? None. You don't eat it. Uh, you, <laughs> you don't. You don't, they, they nope. never, it, it, they just give you the love. It's like with our dog, uh, Angus, he's a big black, 100 pound <clears throat> black King shepherd. 
And he's got a pretty good sized tongue, not quite the horse tongue. And he <laughs> loves licking my beard. Oh Definitely. my goodness! But well, you probably have crumbs in there. You don't know. Well, maybe, but I, uh, I think that he just loves doing it, saying, "Hey, hey, it's good to see you. I love you. Too. <laughs> Thank you so much for rubbing my head and my jowls and and feeding me and giving me cookies." As a matter sure. of fact, why don't you give me a cookie right now? Yeah, my horses are like that. Oh my God, they're obnoxious. <laughs> oh my God, people say I couldn't catch my horse. It's like, are you serious? Did you have cookies? Because mine are like flypaper. It's like you're pushing them away and they're stuck to your hand, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. And they do their tricks. They'll do their whole repertoire of tricks, which we never taught any of them any tricks. Mm. They'll just do their repertoire yeah. so that hopefully if they do their repertoire, you know, you'll give them something. What Our gelding, we call him Artie Farty. Um, he'll just come up to you and bow. And he goes all the way down to where the tips of his toes are tip tilted up. And then he comes up and you can even <laughs> sometimes hear him stretch where he goes, oh, my God, that felt oh. good. And then he comes up and then he goes, cookie? He gets his head sideways, <laughs> cookie? You so know, they're they're all spoiled. Angus is kind of like that too. Uh, and by the way, there are a couple things. Number one, um, I, I was talking with someone on this program about animals and so forth. And they say, you know how when, like, say your dog or your cat, you know, all of a the sudden they'll stretch their paws out and they'll lean down and they'll stretch it out and then they'll do the hind legs they'll push forward and all that sure. they do that because it feels good and when sure. you want to do that and some people have to do it carefully because i've done that and i caused a challenge <laughs> in my calf but for the most part when you feel like stretching you need to stretch because that's what the animals do because sure. it feels good right uh, period my but, horses my horses are so spoiled I have a horse trainer and she keeps them all worked so that when I get time and I can, you know, go and take a quick ride, um, they're, they're all legged up and they're safer. They're uh -huh. safer. Cause I'm really, really old. And, and um, I even got them. I saw this one video and they have a gua sha and it's this plastic with a handle in it. And you basically break apart the fat, the fascia and my horse is in me going nuts. Cause she's out there using that gua sha to to break apart their fascia and their in you know where, whatever part she can reach and she's like their new best friend for all of them now they just love it they're so spoiled but I wouldn't have them any other way. Do you do you connect at all with the wild animals that someone might have around their their home? Uh, we live up on the hill above Santa Barbara. It's very rural. Uh, it's part of the Los Padres National Forest actually, right. and uh, we've had deer and probably bobcats. We've had a bear up there. Uh, and a few others. Uh, do you connect with the wild? It's the same. It's, it's the, the same. same. Okay. You get pulses of information. And I think this is important for people to know. We, When we try to have a conversation with either an animal on the other side or um, a human on the other side or um, your guides, uh, any kind of animals that are present, um, we miss it because they're all so telepathic and we were born that way, but we shut it off. Yeah. So when we turn it back on, we have to learn to listen faster. A mental conversation with an animal sounds like this. Did you? Oh, what? A, oh, are you? Oh, that fast. We get the answer. And too often people, they get into their question. Like they got to have this whole question laid out. Then they wait, they hear crickets and they go, well, this doesn't work. So listening faster is probably one of the key elements. And I've looked at other people's training material. I haven't seen anybody else mention this. They say, just wait and the information will kind of float over you. Well, good luck with that. You <laughs> have to learn to listen faster. Yeah. It's all telepathic. And all of those um, abilities that we're born with that I talked about, all of those put together make you telepathic. Mm. I think uh, my wife and I annoyed a bear. Now he didn't come toward us. Uh, but one day I was taking care of uh, some business in our chicken coop and I went up to the trash and there was this bear. I heard this noise behind this hedge and we have the plum tree and a loquat tree and so forth. And I heard this little noise and I just stopped and I looked over there and all of a sudden up over the hedge, the bear starts, he's looking at me. Right. And then he goes back down again and eats and I'm going, eh, he's eating. So I'm going to go to the trash, take care of what I need to go back down the hill. And my wife says, what's going on? I said, I just saw a bear. I mean, nonchalantly, I just saw a sure. bear. 
And she, I want to see the bear. Uh, I said, okay. <laughs> she starts heading up the road and I, I finish what I'm doing at the, at the chicken coop and I follow her and we go up the hill and we stop at the top of the hill of the road and she hears the noise and I hear it and the bear hears us and we're a good 20, 30 feet away. Right. And he's behind that same hedge and he looks up and he looks at us and he turns around. He walks across the road onto the main paved road and walks down the road, the paved road away from us. Right. Like, look, I was eating. It was nice and quiet. It was a wonderful meal, but you've ruined it. I'm out of here. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. so <laughs> it was so funny. You know, I wasn't afraid. I had no fear. Neither does neither does my wife. She doesn't fear any of that stuff. Right. Um, and uh, I mean, it's just it's just. An, and then we have deer on the property. The dog oh, from sure. the porch can see them and barks like crazy, like get out of my neighbor. Get out of my yard. Right. right. That's their job. And they know uh, he can't get to us. So we're staying here. Right. And they eat the grasses and they roam around and my wife will talk to them and they respond to her. Sir. I mean, it is just. It's a kick. I got to tell you, yeah, because they're reading you telepathically, even though you're not connected to them telepathically, right. they're picking up on your intention. Yeah. And so that's what they go off of. Um, there's so many times when I've gone in person to do readings, which I hardly do that at all anymore because my work is by phone all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there's so many times when people I'll, I'll go to go to do a reading and it's a protection dog. And as the dog is coming at me, I'm going, hi, I'm Terry. I came to play. Go get your ball. And they get to me and jump up and down and turn around and try to go get a toy that fast. Oh, and, the, wow. and you can see the owner is like, oh, shit, you know, something's going to happen. And, they, <laughs> and never, I've never had a, you know, an, an aggressive, even, even with dogs that are protection trained, I've never had one ever interact in a bad way with me. Yeah, It's pretty fun. And the horses, too. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I, I work with people that have a lot of wild horses and they don't get this simple, simple fact. When you start working with a wild horse, that's the born in the wild or, you know, come off of the wild, you know, come off of the, you know, the range, um, their first and only thought is don't eat me. You know, <laughs> don't kill me and eat me. And wow. that is so far from us. You know, we want to go hug him and give him kisses. Yeah. And they're saying, Oh my God, don't eat me. And so once you understand that that's where they're coming from, when you can relay that to them telepathically, which we're all telepathic, when you can relay that to them, they're like, oh, okay, well, I'll take you at your word, but we're going to try this out. Yeah. And you can gain their trust so much faster when you're able to relay that to them. Yeah. I I'm trying to think of how to incorporate the old... Uh trust uh trust but verify kind of thing exactly <laughs> no. no that's really it they they'll they'll trust you by what they're reading on you um but you know with horses you make the right thing easy and the wrong thing difficult and yeah. that is like the best adage to have for and it works on kids husbands dogs same thing make the right thing easy the wrong thing difficult yeah I tell you, I love watching both Angus because he's such a large dog. I love watching him run and I love watching horses run, not necessarily in a horse race like the Kentucky Derby Right out in the wild. They are just so the power in 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 those legs and the shoulders and the hips and the all that moving oh, yeah. is just in I, I, maybe it's because I'm 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 feeling the power that they yeah, have the energy. Running. And the picking energy, picking up yes. on the energy, sure. Yeah. Oh, it's magnificent. Yeah. By the way, uh, my dog, uh, my dog, our dog, Angus, who is my wife's protection dog, um, he he uh, loves to play with soccer balls, and oh, got him one, and he would carry it. He got it deflated just enough to where he could carry it around in his mouth. Get him a jolly ball. A jolly ball. Oh, look, Get him a jolly ball. They have and, handles. Oh, oh those. oh, those kind of balls. Okay, yeah. pretty fun. Well, they love the jolly balls. I used to think that he wanted me to come outside with him to play with his ball so that he could go out and run around and exercise. And in one of these interviews like this, uh, it was shared with me. No, he has had no interest whatsoever in exercising. No, they his don't. job is to get you out there. <laughs> yeah. exercise. I would, I would go for that. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. And I thought, Okay, that makes a little more sense. Yeah, but does. he loves it. And he would nose the ball across the yard. And then I would kick it and he'd go chase it. And then he'd nose it back. And then he would sort of kick it with his nose. I mean, he could play goalie 
you know, right. The soccer right. for the, yeah. uh, for FIFA. Yeah. I love that stuff. It'd be so it'd be so much fun. It really yeah. would. Well, I have to tell you how much fun this has been talking with Terry J right here on tell me your story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host. And we're talking with Terry J and uh, as an intuitive and so forth. And we would like to uh, thank you so much for giving us this time. Uh, you're part of this uh, television series that's available on Peacock, and I'm sure that it's available elsewhere uh, in reruns or what have you. Uh, we hope that people will go to your website, which we are linked to, Terry, so that they can find out more about you. TerryJ.com, T-E-R-R-I-J-A-Y.com. Um, I have three final questions that I want to ask you. But again, okay. I thank you so much for being with us here today. That was great. It was really fun. I also, uh, before I ask you those questions, want to let you know how much I appreciate you listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, as we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. <clears throat> we are here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., streaming live at those times at richarddugan.com, richarddugan.com, along with our Wednesday edition at 9 a.m. That's a special edition of Tell Me Your Story. We're on the podcasts are on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And we are on YouTube. And I hope you'll subscribe and get yourself notified so that every time I post an interview, either a podcast <clears throat> or a video cast, that uh, uh, you will know that it's up there and you can uh, you can participate by watching and, uh, and listening to it. <clears throat> we also uh, thank you so much for uh, supporting the work that we're doing. And if you can do so financially, we would greatly appreciate that. We have a PayPal account. It's there for your security as well as ours. And as I said earlier, <clears throat> we would ask that you participate in the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s, <clears throat> where we um, ask you to go within and listen to that still small voice. And with that, the final three questions are to our guest. And again, thank you so much. Who is Terry J? I'm... An intuitive medium, animal communicator, medical and veterinary intuitive, um, nap dowser, remote viewer, um, intuitive communicator. I do everything intuitively except predictions and police work. What is your life's purpose? Oh, to help people heal from the messages I receive. That's it. I, I have no doubt. And I hope and you it, get the I hope you get the movie reference in this final question. What was your best day? Every day is my best day. Every day is my best day. It really is. Well, Terry, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time you've given us. I'd love to have you come back to, to talk some more. Anytime. Uh, I wish we were doing these programs with a phone line tied in to have people call in. Oh, I love that. because You know, I do readings all day, every day. I yeah. just love it. So oh. and I'm and I'm cheap, too. <laughs> I am. I'll tell you what we've done this with our Vedic astrologer uh, David Hawthorne we've had him on a number of times <clears throat> uh, giving people readings and uh, what we did was we sped up set up a special time and uh, we connected with a lot of people and we took their information so we had it ahead of time and we would get them on the line during these this period of time and we would record it and then put it on the air uh, in that fashion and it uh, that was a lot of fun so maybe we'll do something along those lines down the road yeah, I have to have the energetic connection to somebody by phone directly Absolutely. to me. And, we would do and that. Then I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, I thank you so much for uh, participating in and being a part of Tell Me Your Story. And I thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story. New paradigms for a new world. We are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And until our next broadcast, podcast, video cast, love to Lal and Jeanette, I am still listening.